Hello, Anya. This is another devlog for my roguelike adventure game, Nego Quest. Um, today we got a couple smaller things, and then we got the world events that I can show off. Um, let's get started. Yeah, I figured I'd just roll these into the main thing. So, first we got is uh, magic. We have updated the magic system, so... Um, well, before it really wasn't anything. So now let's see. So let's just start the game. You see magic. We got nothing because we are not a magical character. Yeah, one. does Don't get much spells with one, but if we choose, let's see this. And here we go. You can see we start off with a couple spells just because of our... Uh, or let me, I gotta explain this. You start off with more um, spells based on your level. So as you have a level in like magic per se, for example, um, you gain spells, so certain spells are unlocked at certain levels of magic, and this applies to all stats. I'm assuming, you know, most of the spells are going to be unlocked through magic, but say, like, there's one for disarming traps, um, which I think requires just dex. Let's see. Yeah, reveal traps. And there's a disarm traps that comes later once you've, uh, once you've leveled up your dex a little more. Where's that? Here. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Let me show off the actual... Uh, here we go. System forward. So we've got this spell book, and we have the spell that we can construct, and this is for the spell book. Um, the actual magic is still handled in its own class, uh, but all of the other stats have come out into, into here, so we can all manage it in one place. Uh, so what do you got? We got the magic type. That's the class. This is what makes it, you know, shoot fire versus uh, shoot water versus clean water. I don't know. <laughs> Heal yourself, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. And then we pass in the mana cost. Um, so how much ma mana MP you will use to uh, use it. And then unrelated to that is the unlock cost. And I used stats here so we can do any number of stats. So most of them magic, 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 but some of them. Um, yeah, this one is only, oh, that's perception, not uh, dex, I was wrong. And then this one, the disarm the trap is dexterity. So I'm assuming if we, Let's go back here. So I'm assuming if we go back and do Fox with the Rogue builds and equip the dagger, yeah, it'll learn. Um, here, let's do that. You learned uh, the spell for disarm traps. Now we can. So you see this trap here, you're like, oh no, oh, I got her. <laughs> Where did the trap go? Let me reveal traps. There it is. Of course, we're out of mana now. I wonder if we can just give mana. There we go. And now we can disarm, and then you get the trap back. And so that's... Just an example of the magic. Um, next, I've added some different uh, crops. So um, the cool thing about these is that they grow differently than the uh, default, just like the catnip. Um, well, I guess it has a custom grow pattern. So anyway, the point is you plant them on different locations and they grow differently, which I thought was cool. So catnip, it just grows. Um, so you can just plant that on the ground. We'll use a couple of these. And then we insta grow. There we go. And it grows in this little nice like pattern. Harvest it. Cool. Um, and then so you see cactus says must be planted in sand. Cocoa seed must be planted on a tree. Um, so each one has a different location you have to use to actually plant them. Um, what's a cool one? Let's try the cocoa seed. Do you have a forest nearby? We do. Let's go. Um, so if we do have a tree, we can plant. Oh, and if we don't put it on the right spot, so if we try to use it here. It says, oh, here, let me show you. And here. Yeah, it says wrong soil type. But then we planted it, it actually uh, worked. And then we insta grow, and then it replaces the tree, and then you get these little cocoa, cocoa pods. I don't know what you call them. Um, yeah, and I'm not sure if I've revealed this before, but all these crops have a chance, or they have a related um, enemy that goes with them. So this comes into play when you are cooking. If you use an invalid recipe, you might accidentally cook up something monstrous using one of the uh, en related enemies based on one of the invalid uh, two ingredients you input to the, uh, to the table. But, um, well, it still will be a problem, but anyway, these all have a bunch of new recipes to go with them. We got fudge and all the other favorites, so you can have fun exploring that. And the last little sort of mini item we got for today is uh, elementals. So this is a form of static progression. So you can see um, they increase a certain stat, each of them. Some of them have different stats. They can increase multiple, uh, just chooses a random one. 
and we can also spawn the workbench. Here it is. And then we can combine them. So what we do is we say earth and water and we get luck or water and fire. What does that give us? Magic. So, um, okay, you can't see it. There you go, magic. So, um, thought behind these is they are just sort of like a filler dungeon reward. What these do, I didn't even use one yet, is, oh, so here are the shards, right? Once you combine two elementals, you get shards and they just increase one stat. So, um, thought is, this is a form of like static progression. So your stats are generally gonna be the same. If you get better weapons, they'll get better, but there's no way to increase it other than weapons. So this is that way. It's like pots in Realm of the Mad God, yeah? So we can use one of these. Um, so let's use an earth and it'll give us... Oh, I added it to the table, sorry. Um, we get death or we get HP. Looks like those are the two. And then water, we can increase a bunch. Wind just increases anything. Fire is just strength. And so now you can see our stats are significantly uh, going up. And we can use our, our one little luck shard. So my thought behind this was like, you know, you can choose sort of uh, like a random stat, right? It's a balance, balance factor. So you get the elementals from dungeon loot, and then you can either increase one of many, one of several uh, stats, either magic or mana, which I guess are related. Um, or you could combine two to get the specific stat that you want uh, and just increase that but it's only half the effectiveness so you could use a uh, let's go back a wind elemental and get a chance at speed dex luck or perception but if you're going for an archer build you're going to want that perception only so in this case it would be valuable to combine this with uh what was it an earth or something to get the um the perception only uh whatever per chance wise you know if you're turning one in four and a two to one or something like that. You know what I mean. Um, so anyway, and yeah, so the, the thought is that these will come from sort of related dungeons. So the water area dungeon is gonna have a water elemental. The uh, dungeon that's in a volcano, if there is one, maybe there should be, that sounds really cool. It'll give you a fire and maybe a chance at like an earth elemental. So it's just hope, uh, I'm hoping to add like theming sort of to the world using these. And again, just as filler for dungeon loot because I don't know what to give uh, other than this. Okay, finally we can get into the main section of this uh, devlog. So um, the main point is the world events or the world quests. Um, so this is, I think, an idea I've talked about where, you know, I want quests not to be, you know, kill 10 rats and, and bring me back their tails or, you know, bring me an orange from the sacred grove of the orange forest, I don't know. Um, you know, I wanted quests to be sort of more unique than just like fetch quest, escort quest. I think I've talked about this before. Anyway, so um, my sort of sort of countermeasures for dealing with this are to make world events. What are world events? They're little things in the world that you can find. Uh, and I took a little inspiration from like Hexit from this, the mod pack, where um, you know you go into the world and there's like you know a giant gravel pit and a cool piece of like glowstone or like diamond in the middle. You're like, oh cool, I'll mine this. Oh, it's actually a trap, and now you're in a dungeon, or like you know any number of similar things like that where you know it's sort of like an event. But they don't always have to be like bad or dropping into enemies. You know they can have different uh, you know events to them. And anyway, so you can see a couple. I won't spoil anything. Don't worry. Uh, so you can see a couple here. Just a little cool event. And I think. Let's see if we can find a beach to get a cool. Um, to get a cool one. Yeah. So I want to populate. Oh my gosh! Look at all. Oh wait, that's a mountain. I was like, wait, look at all those <laughs> those things. Um, here we go. We have beach. Let's look. Got these little cacti by the way. Cactus juice. Um, let's see if we can find one of these little islands. Here we go. Yeah, we got one of these little, um, like, treasure islands, and so these are kind of like, like, I don't know what to call it, like a semi-puzzle event, so what you got is this island that, you know, maybe connected to the desert, but it's not always, right? So these, and they're kind of, you can see, they're not connected, they're just floating there, so the idea is you can, um get the create land spell, or maybe there's some other way to create like a bridge through here. Or maybe you can make like a boat and sail over there. And then you have this island with a bunch of bunch of enemies and you got a bunch of loot on the island. So um, this one kind of looks like a whale. That's kind of cool. At least you can't really see it. Um, yeah, and I think there's another one down here. Or is that, no, he's just chilling. That's a bug, sorry. <laughs> um, and yeah, there's one of these again. I don't have very many of them, but anyway. 
Yeah, and so uh, I want to talk through some of the problems I had when implementing these. So the first one I ran into was a pathfinding problem. Pathfinding has been a problem the whole time. Let me just show you the situation. So the way that pathfinding normally works, say you have a room and there's a little door to the room and then you have your player, right? Player, hello. And a bunch of enemies, right? Let's make this bigger. Enemies, rawr. And what the enemies will do is they say, you know, instead of just go towards player, they want to pathfind, right? So you have all these tiles and they have a cost, re cost we're using A star. And so they go, you know, search, search, and then they eventually find that this is the path to the player. Cool, right? Um, well, the problem I ran into is, let's say the enemies are slowly approaching. There's an event where there's a lot of enemies. That's the only spoiler I give. Um, and one, as they're approaching, one enters the door. Now, they're, hey, it looks like a cat paw. Um, now there's one in the door. <laughs> so now all these enemies are trying to find the path that doesn't exist. Um, now, I don't think this was a problem before. It would have become a problem. So the way I changed the systems before, it had, so you had all the tiles and it would check, is the tile free? And it says, yes, there's no, there's no blocks there. There's no walls there. You can't walk through a wall. And then it checks, is there an enemy there? Well, how do you check for the enemy or an entity that is not walkable? How do you check for entities? You say, is this an entity in the way? Which one? This one? No. Is this entity in the way? No. Is this one? No. Uh, which is really slow, especially when the number of entities increases, which is a problem with this event where you have a bunch of entities spawning all around you. Or enemies in this case. So what do you do? I changed the system so you set the floor to an un... and like all, so like even the player does this. So you got your player, you set the floor to a non-walkable, right, right on top of yourself. So this is where the player is now. And then you move over here. This is walkable again. Now the one below you is not walkable. Um, so the pathfinding can kind of just work the same as before. It's essentially the same as a wall on top of yourself, so you can't pathfind over it. The reason this became a problem was because when this enemy comes in the door, yeah, I'm, I'm circling back, <laughs> the enemy comes back in the uh, door, this guy says, hey, there's no path in here. Well, let me look even farther. And the pathfinding goes and they look, nope. They look, nope. They look, nope. They look, nope. <laughs> so the way A-star works is it just keeps looking for a path uh, until it finds one. The problem is when you can't find a path, which is in this case you, little monster you are in the way. Um, so a way to solve this, you could try to find if the path is completely blocked. I have no idea how you would do it. I looked it up and couldn't really find too, too much. So um, yeah, that's a problem. And especially like, again, there's so many enemies, they're searching the entire map. So the sort of temporary cheapo solution I came with was the enemies will have like a max sort of like like number that they're willing to commit. So you say if the path is farther than like this range, it's not a range because of the way it works, it'll, it'll look like, you know, like this because it's closer and then it'll go out. It'll look like a weird shape because the way the building works. Um, but yeah, so they have a maximum cost that they can all allocate. And if they can't do that, then they just sit still. Um, which may not be the best way to do it. Of course, in the future, we can extend this by saying, you know, if you find a path, go on the path. But so like, say, you know, you're following, this is your path, right? There's no, there's no enemy and there's no enemy in the way. You can go all the way over here. But if somebody does get in the way, instead of just staying there, we say, let's just move as much as we can. We're trying to recalculate each time. If we can't, so what, you know? And then we're at least getting closer. And then when the, this enemy moves or gets killed, you know, by the player, hi -ya! Then, this guy can actually enter and attack the player or whatever. So, that was the problem we faced. That was our solution. Um, other problem. Okay, how do I how do I draw this? So there is an event, and I'll try not to spoil super much. There's an event where there's a little house. I don't think we saw it. Oh, little little house. Let's use this color. The little little garden on the back. Here we go. And the person inside the house likes to wander, so they're here. That's a, that's a not good color, let's use this one. And there's a little door here. There's a door there. So they're like, I like to wander, do, do, do. they're moving around. And how did I code this? Well, you spawn in the house, 
spawn in the garden, you say, okay, you can wander inside the house or inside the garden. Sounds simple enough, but this is not in a vacuum. This is in the context of a grid. So the grid. It's a big old, big old grid of squares. Let's just do a, just do a simple one. Oh wait, we need, we actually need more to show the point. So, yeah, we got our, our grid, and let's say, uh, hold on, let me, yeah, let me just say this. So, garden's over here, right? Garden, or house, and your little garden, your little door, and your little dude. So, the values for these rectangles are just numbers, right? They're just like 0 to 32, it's, it's within the chunk space. I guess they're one chunk big in this example. I guess in reality it would be like like this, because they're inside the chunk. That'll be easier to explain this. Um, so the problem arises. So let's say the player is here, right? So it works if the chunk is one big, right? If we're only looking at this space, 0 to 32, we're chilling. Let's say the player is right here. So the chunk you're inside is this one. The loaded area is this much space. So the way the loading areas work, if you remember from the last devlog, is that this whole area is now the chunk, or is now the world's uh, map. When it used to be one chunk, it's now a 3x3 three three area of chunks that act like there's one big chunk. So the chunks are just for saving, right? They, these lines, these separations are, are only invisible. All four nations are really one. Um, so 0 to 32 is here. But you're over here, so this is 0 to 32, this is 32 to 64, 64 to like what, 92 or something? So when homie tries to move from his house to his garden, he's moving here, <laughs> which is way out of the, <laughs> which is not where you need to be, right? <laughs> Obviously, because his house is here. Um, I guess this is a more simple solution than I'm leading on. Anyway, it was a lot of, a lot of, uh, brainstorming just how to get the data where I need it because you know we have a chunk offset but um, I was trying to pass it through like info I have this you know info that I just pass in when somebody updates so it gives you you know player position and uh, the world map data so you can just do what you need with it um, the problem is the data is in chunk manager so anyway simple solution just throw the chunk offset into each entity what is the chunk offset What's a good color? Um, there we go. So the player is here, right? This is our chunk. This is zero, zero. So the chunk offset will tell you which chunk. So if you're in this chunk, says you are this much, you are zero, or you were one, zero, of an offset. So in this chunk, for example, it would be zero, one, zero, one, that much offset, or here. So it's gonna be the numbers that you need. So it's going to be 64, 64. It's going to give you this position. So you can add that to whatever values you're using for uh, the rectangles, for the house rectangle and for the garden rectangle. And then you can act as if this is your home chunk and then you can move between it. Um, that is a solution for that. So anyway, world events. I want to have all sorts of cool stuff to add like lore and um, things like this. Not... Not making them just, you know, fetch quest, like adding a spin to it. So maybe it's a fetch quest, but there's a twist at the end. Subversions, I don't know. Yeah, that's all I got. That's the devilogue. Uh, thanks for watching for this long. If you have any suggestions for ideas for any of the things we showed for magic spells, for crops that we can farm, recipes using those crops. Here, I'll show on screen. I'll show the, uh, the crops we have again. Just to... Uh... Oh gosh, I got rid of it. Hold on. <laughs> We're getting it back. Um, yeah, here. And we gotta load it in again, because it's old world. Um, here we go. These crops, um, catnip, cat cactus, cocoa, rice, sugar, beet. So sugar beet acts as sugar for recipes like fudge, and like beet for recipes like salad, as a, just a little, little side note there. Um, elementals. I don't think there's really much to suggest there, but... If you have anything, then go ahead. And then, of course, uh, worlds, world quests, world events. If you have any ideas like, oh, I want to see a garden where you have to find different items in like a treasure hunt style. I don't know. <laughs> That's actually a good idea. I should write that down. Anyway, if you have ideas, uh, I'd love to hear them because that is how we build cool stuff. Anyway, thanks for 
watching. That is the devlog. Uh, see you later. Bye, Nia.